The world depends on a 60-year-old code that no one knows anymore. It's a very strong, very bold headline, but let's see if this article does justice to what the headline is. So very briefly speaking, this article is about COBOL as a programming language. And uh, I mean, I'm sure you might have heard it a few months back or maybe a couple of years back because this uh, articles of these kind just keep on surfacing once in a while. And I discovered this from one of the subreddits. And uh, what this article says in general, we'll go through the details as well but what this article says is that COBOL is one of the programming language which a lot of businesses and finance especially the legacy ones use and uh, since it's a it's a sort of a dying language in a way because there are much better languages now available we are left in a position where you know a lot of software which is already written and is in production is working on these programming languages and when you have somebody you want to maintain upgrade these systems maybe change something then you get into trouble because you know nobody knows what COBOL is around, right? Nobody's learning COBOL. Is it true though? Let's find out. So it says that $3 trillion worth of transactions every single day are handled by the 64-year-old programming language, which is COBOL, which is used by 43% of all banking systems, which is, you know, it's it's just a huge number. It's a non-negligible number. 43% of the banking systems using COBOL, which handles $3 trillion daily transactions on a language which, you know, you won't find people getting excited about learning Bowl these days. That's that's at least what I can say. Including 95% of all the ATM activity in US and 80% of all the in-person credit card transactions, which is crazy high numbers, right? So here's the catch with this article. This article is likely paid by IBM for their new AI known as Watson, which what basically does what this article says that IBM uh, thinks that it can fix this thing with its AI. So what it's saying is that instead of relying on exclusively on a limited pool of human programmers to solve the problem, what what is the problem exactly? Solving that, you know, if there needs to be a security update or a security patch to the code basis, they should not be in COBOL, right? They should be in probably some other language which where, you know, we can find more engineers. This is what IBM says. See, they say that we need to maintain and modernize the code that underpins so much of business and finance worlds, but we don't have enough skilled workers. We need to carry out those updates. Now, when you change a language from one language to another, the problem is that the person who's doing it needs to know both the languages, right? So you can't just give somebody a job who just no COBOL to write that COBOL script into Java or you know Golang or Rust or anything. You need somebody who knows COBOL as well as who knows the other language and probably like both the languages very well so that the change is not only just working but it's actually better if there is any bug which was introduced earlier it gets fixed now and so on. So what this says pretty much is that use AI this section I'm not going to go through this uh, thing, but it says that use AI, which is IBM Watson X, and uh, you know, change the code from COBOL to Java, at least in this case. So, if we look at the small video from IBM again, if we just move forward a little bit, so you can see on the left you have some level of COBOL code, they are using VS Code, of course, and then they use the Watson X AI to generate a class from that particular COBOL code, right? Which is interesting, but now let me just share my own viewpoints. Let me just share my own few pointers on how do I think and feel about it. Okay, so first things first, let's just agree that this is an ad for IBM Watson. So we're just not gonna see that this as a, you know, as a unique solution or anything, because we know that there are more AI solutions out there. So that's okay. I mean, running an ad is not an issue. Uh, maybe IBM Watson X is really good. Once that is established, now just actually try to look at the problem, which has been introduced. So what has been introduced in this blog post is that COBOL is a programming language which is hard or you know for which developers are not there. Well if you are a banking system which is you know processing three trillion dollars of money every single day and I mean of course there are a lot of banks I'm just saying that like a one system and if you want to upgrade this COBOL to you know, Java or anything, you can hire the best developers, right? Coding by nature, it's not something that, uh, it's it's not a non-transferable skill. If you have an exceptional developer who understands computers, who understands how assembly works, who understands, you know, what are, you know, if you're writing JavaScript or Python or any sort of code, how does it compile down? What is a compiler? You know, how everything is working, variables, assignments, registers, how CPU works. If you have a team of three or four people like this, it's an 
independent team, right? Programming doesn't work like, oh, I am a JavaScript developer, I can't touch Python code ever again, right? Sure, you would not be familiar with it, but give somebody who's an expert a week, a week's time, some documentation, maybe a few courses, and you would see that they would be able to get to 80, 85, 90% there in a week or a couple of weeks. It takes it takes months, if not years, to establish like best practices or you know a few gotchas which you will only discover with experience. But for the most part, you can do a pretty solid job with just a few weeks' time, right? Any developer take any top 0.1% developer and I can guarantee you that you can train them into COBOL or you know let alone any other language assembly you name it so the underlying problem that there are you know not a lot of COBOL developers I think that is a fundamentally flawed assumption it's it's a right thing to say there are not a lot of COBOL developers but it's not a blocker to migrate systems which are so precious right this is I'm assuming like this is one of the most precious if not the most most precious online system which is like processing three trillion dollars every single day you don't get to hear that so if you want if people who are in charge of this much asset want it to be more performant robust and secure they sure as hell know like where to find these developers and how much to pay them right it's it's at some point it's a money game right you can pay a million dollars to any one of these best class developers and get the job done right so it's, it's not a hard thing second of all since this is an ad i would say that okay ibm watson x is it's probably okay but we all know that gpt4 at least i mean even today is still state of the art right it's a closed source model gpt4 is also closed source model i'm not sure if ibm watson is or is not but it's not better than that right so actually i want to try this out let's try this out because we also use gpt4 let's see if this works so i'm gonna go to codedown.com slash ai which is our own version of gpt4 with a little bit of prompt engineering and a you know a bunch of new things as well i'm gonna just go with i don't have a code snippet and i'm gonna just say that let's learn a bit about COBOL, right and let's just start solving this so i want to talk to this ai system i want to interact with it to understand like you know if GPT-4 can do some basic things with COBOL. Okay, so GPT-4 of course says that, uh, you know, it gives me a program, it tells me a little bit about COBOL, it tells me a few things, but I'm not satisfied, right? I am a JavaScript developer. I have coded in JS my whole life. Explain COBOL to me like a JS developer. So see, I asked it about, you know, I'm a JavaScript developer, tell me about it. So it just starts telling me a few things, structure, variables, how it works, the procedure, how the data is handled and so on. So let's say if I ask it something which is a little bit more practical, let's say, give me example, first of all, in JavaScript on how to read a file and count the number of characters in it. And then same example in COBOL and teach me what are the differences, right? Something like this. I mean, one basic thing would be, you know, you're just using JavaScript to read a file and, you know, do things like this. Now at CodeDam, we have a lot of playgrounds, but we don't have a COBOL playground. Um, if we would have, I would have loved to just copy paste this and try it out, you know. But yeah, I mean, this is, this is pretty doable, right? I'm not taking up any course at all, even right now. I'm just using my understanding. I'm just using, you know, things I already know a little bit here and there and just trying to make sense of what COBOL is and it pretty much it's okay I mean you can once you have like seen enough examples of JS in my case I know JavaScript very well and COBOL I can establish a relationship between you know which part exactly does what even without understanding like what this environment division exactly is or input output exactly is but for that of course you would have courses and I don't know if we have COBOL courses we sure as hell do have full stack courses but not exactly COBOL courses right now so so yeah that's a bummer but anyway you get the idea that people are trainable and with softwares like gpt4 even uh, you can even convert it into just like it said you can convert it now convert it into a java class so now you can see that it also did that you know the ai system is powerful it understands what you are asking and it will do all of these things for you so what they are demonstrating is definitely possible with the right click and you know just click on a button and you'll just get the new code but what you have to realize one of the big things which i don't think a lot of people talk about is what 
what you have to realize with these systems is that these systems themselves are not it's not foolproof because chat gpt gpt4 also makes mistakes and in a system which is you know processing three trillion dollars every single day there should be no mistakes in a system which is processing you know let's say flight control of a aircraft there can be no mistakes right these are very mission critical softwares which if fails it will not be downtime but actual financial loss life loss you know things that really really matter like high level stakes it's not like your average side side which just goes down it's like you know real loss of a lot of people that's why it also says i think you can see it says that it might be 80 or 90 percent of what they need but it still requires a couple of changes these couple of changes is very very critical because chat gpt apparently can write can end up writing vulnerable code or code which is not good enough for the given situation and you still need a intelligent human developer who understands much more than the gpt engine itself the stakes where you know where we are working and maybe double checking triple checking all of that but it's definitely a productivity booster right not only you can just run the code once so you run cobol file once through an ai agent it converts it you can then you know have another developer fix a few things and then run it again through ai right so it just acts as your code buddy in a way where this particular software can help you move fast self correct in case of you know you are just facing any troubles you can just hop over to chat gpt or code damn ai and just figure out what's working what's not working but as it is said it's not a developer replacement right even gpt4 i would say it's not a developer replacement so yeah that's pretty much it for this video hopefully you liked it hopefully you learned something about cobol something new about this that's all for this one let me know in the comments below what do you think about cobol are you learning it in the next year in this year do let me know your thoughts on this that is all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon